Welcome to my channel. When I sat down, I, I didn't fix myself until I turned the camera on and I noticed you can see my Wicked Witch right there. So I'm like, Tch, bonus. <laughs> I'm not moving. <laughs> anyway, we are here for weigh-in. Not what I ate. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll discuss it, but we won't try to remember it all. That's for sure. And a um, little bit of talk about carbs again. I'm going to ride that horse to town one more time. <laughs> so, I'm just warning you right now. Put the coffee on, brew the tea. I feel a long one coming on. So, first, let me just tell you. This here coffee. <sighs> Went to Duke yesterday. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I needed coffee. I was not going to have any coffee when I got home last night. And I knew I wouldn't feel like going to the store. So I ran out first thing yesterday morning. Got me some coffee. Well, the Food Line brand of coffee pods was on sale. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get that. Because I've had their coffee before and it's good coffee. Well, I thought, well, let me just read the different kinds. You know, the different um, flavors and whatnot. See what I might want to change to. Well, I've never had French roast. And it said something, something, notes of chocolatey something, something. I'm like, okay, I know it won't taste like mocha, but that will maybe make it smooth. That's what I'm thinking. It's bad enough to have hair on your chin, but when it starts growing on your chest, <laughs> it's, it's bad. This stuff is bad. OMG. And I bought two boxes of it. Like a moron, I bought two boxes of something I wasn't sure of. But I'm figuring, a French roast coffee, how can it be? Bad can it be? Is this chocolate? You no, know, it's bad. It's bad. Bad, bad. I told David I'm going to have to buy extra cream or just to tone it down so I can drink it. Which, this little cup can't hardly get none in it. But, golly, if I brewed it any stronger, a spoon would stand up in it. It would be so, so thick. Oh, my gosh. Do any of y'all drink? French roast coffee? It, I don't drink black coffee. There's no way I can drink this black. No way. It is so strong and so bitter. David even come in yesterday. He goes, I can smell it. <laughs> he never says anything about smelling my coffee. He's like, yeah. So that was the first thing yesterday. Let me go and take a sip because you know I'm going to drink it. I got two boxes of it. He said, well, can you take it back? I said, well, during this COVID stuff. I don't know that they're taking food back. I mean, you know, so I'm not going to traipse down there and try it. I'm just going to suck it up and drink it. Lord, there went a hair. <laughs> Let me pick that thing up. Anyway, <laughs> so spent the day up at Duke yesterday, got there early. Er, then the early, they told me to get there, and I was still sitting there until it was my appointment time. And I'm going to tell you, just real quick, like night and day from what they did me down here, this was like a, a, a cattle line. Just file you through. File you through. I told David, which, it, you know, he already knew. But um, there was one time I went down there for injection because I got a bunch of them from there. That's the only place I had gotten back. Well, no, that's the second place. The first place I, I would take my dog to. So I had been getting injections from him for, well, five years, four of it active injections, one of it I just didn't go because he said I had already had too many steroids and I couldn't get no more. So I just laid off for about a year before I just couldn't take it no more. So anyway, he's the one that finally referred me to the surgeon who wouldn't do it and then referred me to Duke. So anyway, the way they do it, there, there was... One day, they just come to the door and call your name, and you just walk back there. You walk in the room, they pull your pants down so they can get to you, you know, lumbar region. You lay on the table, bing, bang, boom, and you're walking over into another door where you sit down, have a little Coke in a can, they check your blood pressure, send you on your way. One day, I kid you not, I was walking. Well, they push you in a wheelchair. I was going in out the door into recovery which is a small little area and the next patient was already coming in the door getting prepared to get up on the table yes yes this place up here you got your own little changing room they make you change and put a gown on you they don't just want to rip your pants 
<laughs> read your pants down. <laughs> they check your blood sugar. They check your blood pressure. They check your temperature. They check your oxygen. She comes in and she marks your back where she's supposed to do it. I, I guess like, you know, when they do a knee replacement, they'll put like an X or do it so that you don't get confused. She comes in there so she knows, okay, that I'm doing it down here. You go in there, there's somebody monitoring where they put the dye in you. There's a x-ray tech monitoring that. There's another guy, there's another girl, there's a doctor. Now, she didn't hit nothing that sent me off the table like the last time, which was what made me nervous and I was nervous laying there. And oh, and they kept me monitoring my vitals too. They didn't do that, they didn't do none of that down here. And um, it, 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 she didn't send me off the table. It was uncomfortable, it, it was uncomfortable. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much. Um, I, I mean, I I made it. I'm sitting here. It's not like I volunteer to do it every day, but I got through. Um, but when she got through, I told her, I said, I thank you for not thumping them in there. She said, who did that? I said, well, down there where I always got them, he, he thumped them in. He put them needles in there and he thumped them in. And then he'd do it again and he'd thump it in all the way. It's hard to tell. I think they just hit it in one needle area because there's only like two little dots. But the way he thumps it in, I don't know if they thump it in and they go a little bit at a time. I don't know what it is, but it would be like three or four times on each side. He would do it and it, that was not comfortable. Obviously, I made it through. I, I I went through them all like a trooper except for that last one. And so I just told her, you know, and she said, well, who did that? I said, well, then she goes, well, we try not to do. <laughs> like, yeah, she was so gentle. It was just the actual, you know, procedure itself that was kind of, you know. She even come in there and talked with me before the procedure. She come and talked with me before I went home. It, it's, it was crazy. They told me there was a team, it would be different, and they were right. It was a team, and it was different. I was telling her about, you know, how... I was going out, and the other ones coming in. She said, because it's an assembly line. I said, that's exactly what David said. It's an assembly line. She said, yeah, she said, uh, I applied for someone like that. She goes, but um, I didn't work there, <laughs> obviously. She said, that just was not um, the way she wanted to do it. So I'm glad. I was glad that um, my doctor recommended me to go see her. Um, it, it was sore last night. It was hurting last night. I had a, you know, hours in the car to get home. It, it's a little, you know, this morning because it's going to take a few days for that to go away. And then it could take like a week before you can tell any effects of the steroids, if there would be any effects of that or not. But I'm, I'm doing good. So I made it through. I appreciate y'all's thoughts and prayers to get me through that nervousness. <sighs> now. What was next? I told you about the nasty coffee. Weigh in, that's it. Oh, and the food, we're not talking about it because I told you whatever day that was, I come to you. I said, Well, I got off the track, and that's why we're talking about these carbs because these carbs are my downfall. And y'all can believe it or not believe it, but you can just get on the internet and you can search it and you can find out for yourself that. It is a real problem for some people. Not everybody. I can't say this enough. Everybody does not have the same body. Everybody does not metabolize food or process food, even in their brain, the same way. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So I'm not telling you what I ate because I have just not. I've eaten carbs every day. I've eaten whatever I wanted. We ate out twice yesterday because we were on the road all day and I wasn't going to cook. So we just ate out twice. And, um, before that, I don't even remember what I cooked, but I ate stuff I shouldn't have been eating. I don't even remember where I got it. I scrounged up something around here. Had the rest of that ice cream. Got it out of the freezer. They eat up the whole thing of ice cream. Oh, anyway, so it was bad. And so that that's what we're going to talk about, how that it, it compounds itself. But let's do the weigh-in. And... Reading how, and when I talk about carbs, I'm not talking about your complex carbs that I'm incorporating now. The grains, um, 
that I'm doing now. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the refined carbs, the white flours and the sugars and things like that. Cakes and cookies. I even talk about whole wheat breads because they affect me in other ways. Um, we'll talk about that. So, this is unreal. But it makes me understand now why this over two and three quarters of a year maybe why I've had big gains and big losses and big gains and big losses these carbs are my enemy they are my nemesis and had she not told me to do that Mediterranean diet and and I changed it and then I saw how I went from you know gangbusters on low carb to then I keep saying we'll talk about it in a minute I'm trying to get ahead of myself I weighed 322.6 this morning. If y'all re are y'all ready? Are you ready? 9.1 pound gain. Yeah. One week, nine pounds. My clothes still fit. My rings still fit. It, I mean, it still rolls around, you know, easy as can be. But there's nine pounds of, I'm going to tell you what, a lot of it is, too, that comes from those carbs. Now, I'm sitting here. I've been looking. They have, let me tell you, that just puts me down to 54.5 pounds. I can tell you right now, sitting here, there's going to be a loss next week because weigh-in is before Christmas Eve starts. I ain't going to make no promises for the two weeks after that. Christmas Eve week and Christmas week. Nope. I'm not making no promises for that. And I'm not going to apologize for it either because it's just how it's going to be. I mean, I'm not going to go out of my way to try to gain weight, but I'm saying there are two days in there that I'm going to enjoy what I'm going to enjoy. And if that derails me, um, I'm just going to have to pick up the pieces. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I know what to do is pick up the pieces. So this is, this is how carbs work. Now, you, you don't take me for... The gospel, you get on there and you research, research yourself just like I research. I pull from many different websites. I don't just stick with one. And I try to determine if it's a reputable website or if it's a website trying to sell me something. Or if it's a website saying, you have to go on this diet because I don't take information from those. I don't take information from websites that would have something to gain from me knowing their knowledge. So, what do I always tell you? I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you to do low carb. I'm not telling you to give up your anything. And I'm not telling you to change anything. I'm telling you my experience, what is happening to me, and what I have researched and learned about how these blasted refined carbs really do mess with you. Now, let me say this. It, it is it been proven with tests. There is a lot of genetics to this. Some people have predisposition genes to their body just mishandles, mismanages carbs because you see me, carbs keep me fat and puffy and all this and that. And then, you know, girl over here, she eats a candy bar and a milkshake and dunks it together with some french fries and loses five pounds. So there are um, other things that come into play so perhaps that's our genes that are different our metabolisms are different our body makeups are different our chem chemicals are different but i've just got a i got my notes down here so the foods that are high in the sugar and other refined carbs commonly cause cravings that can be hard to control that is a well studied fact this is how that works. And we all know this to be true. If we crave the cakes and cookies and candy bars and ice creams because it makes us feel good, if we're emotional eaters, and the first thing we want to do is run to that food, this is why people say, oh, it, it don't make you feel better. Well, th there's scientific proof that yes, it does because they fire off what they call feel good chemicals like serotonin, dopamine, and other 
relaxing endorphins in the brain. Where do we eat? We eat up in here. If I barely eat hungry half the time we eat, but our brain says, whew, girl, I sure would use some chocolate ice cream today. Hey, honey, will you go get me some ice cream? Well, if that's what you want, well, it's what I want. And off he goes. That is what happens. Okay. The cravings become habit because we keep seeking to feel that high where those dopamines and serotonins and endorphins come out when we eat that sweet dessert or that even that white bread sandwich you know it, it could just be a bowl of pasta the what the whatever we crave sugar's the big one though it, it fires those off and we feel like oh man we feel good and i am so sorry i'm talking so much i got a dry spot right there and about to choke me um just like a drug you smoke that pot, whatever it is, you take that pill, you shoot that up, whatever it is, and you get that initial high. When you come down off of that, what are you looking for? Another high. When we eat them first five cookies, and we're like, oh, okay, I got my cookies. And when that initial high drops, what are we doing? We're looking for something else. Y'all know it's the truth. You that know, know. Okay. That is how they become addictive. That is how we keep going back and back and back and back for more and more and more because we have addicted ourselves to them. We, we I've, somebody told me sugar was not a drug. I don't tell you who it was. <laughs> I'm like, um, you're wrong. Sugar is a drug. Okay, so, did, let, I'm going to read this. This is, this is how this works. The refined type carbs. They cause an increased insulin level. We've discussed some of this before, but we're just kind of go over it again. The high glycemic foods, look up the glycemic index. You want to stay low on the index. These are foods like white flour foods, processed sugars, which include high fructose corn syrup and sucrose. So those are the foods that cause the, um, the addictive behaviors of wanting more and more and more. Okay, so this insulin increase causes the body to burn carbs for energy, not fat. We discussed that before. The rest of it is stored as what? Fat. The non-fat cells, the, the cells that don't store fat but still have jobs to do, are what they call neglected. It says, and then they cause you to be hungry again. This causes you, the more carbs you eat, the more carbs you crave. So that's how it works. It, it bypasses those cells that are supposed to do all these uh, other jobs in your body and then you come down off of that initial when that blood sugar spikes and it shoots you that energy because that's what a carb does. It shoots you that energy. You expend that energy. The rest of it goes to fat. And then the rest of your body that needs to do something is just sitting there saying, well, where's my part? <laughs> so guess what? Go eat again. Give me some more. Now, this is about um, glycogen. The excess glucose, which is what we're talking about, the part that goes to the part the, um, for your fat, is converted by the liver to glycogen. Glycogen mod molecules, and here's, here's the part that says, oh, so that's why I, I gain water weight and feel bloated when I pee out on carbs. Those glyco glycogen molecules store three to four grams of water each you think oh that ain't nothing how big is a molecule can you see it no multiply that by how many ever molecules <laughs> that that's where your bloat comes from that's where your water weight comes from so that's why like right now i am so uh, nine pounds that's not fat some of it might be but the majority of it is just carb 
water bloat. When I stop them and I go back on my low carb, that's how I know, knock on wood, there will be a loss next Thursday because it will have given me food to use for energy, nothing extra to store in the fat. So then it'll start pulling from the fat that I already have on my body. And that will suck out that water. So that's how I see it. Like I say, you Google it yourself. I take my notes and then if I explain it wrong, which I have been known to do, you always check behind me. Now, that, that's what I said. I was just telling you without reading it. Restricting these carbs and going low carb, you're burning through the glucogen stores and you can drop, that's why they say sometimes you might drop 10 pounds and that's why. It's just exactly what I said. You're using your own fat for storage and you're burning through the glucogen that is holding the water and the water is released. Isn't this fascinating? And, and we think carbs ain't got nothing to do with it. Yes, they do. Let me turn my little page here. Now, the difference in those refined carbs, let me get some more of this. Listen, let me. <laughs> so at one point, I've told y'all before, we had seven people living in this house. It was me and David, my brother, my son and his girlfriend, and my daughter and her boyfriend. Well, her boyfriend liked coffee as black as a night without a moon, just as pitch black as you'd want it, and strong. Well, RJ's girlfriend had got her a cup one time, and she <laughs> just about choked. And from that moment on, she dubbed his coffee death coffee <laughs> to this day. And this was, oh my gosh, this was, oh, nine years ago, eight years, I don't know, it was something ridiculously long ago, to this day, you'd say, hey, what about his coffee, you mean that death coffee, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think that's what I'm drinking, I'm, I'm drinking his death coffee, so, the difference in those refined carbs, the ones that shoot it to you quick, are the complex carbs, which I'm trying to add in now to help my cholesterol. The complex carbs take longer to break down into glucose and provide more lasting energy. So where that candy bar says, boom, you got that energy. Okay, I'm through. The the uh, millet that I ate for breakfast this morning, it climbs up on there. I said, okay, we, we're bringing you some energy. We're gonna get you some energy. And there's no big swoosh down. It says it means they do this more efficiently than simple carbs. You get a more efficient source of energy from complex carbs than you do refined carbs. The slower to process carbs. Now the best sources of complex carbs are the whole grains that still contain the bran and the germ. So that would be a difference in brown rice and white rice because white rice has been de-germed or whatever you call it. They don't have the brown coating on the outside and that's the part where you get your fiber from. That's that's the good, the benefit of it. Also, um, it's from veggies and they say legumes. There are certain beans that are legumes and then some they say are not. So I don't know if people use legumes interchangeably with beans or not, but beans is on my list and nuts. Um, the white flours and white rices, those are the refined. Those those are not the complex ones that you want. It says um, what I was saying here from the complex. You don't get that quick high like you do from simple carbs. Now, my downfall came from when I started eating bread, and I told you, this, this is why I'm going to ride that horse into town again. I done told you a couple times that when I started low carb, I didn't eat bread, period. I wasn't even going to try to eat a healthy bread. I just stayed away from it. 
and, and all the white flowers, I, I, I stayed away from the sugar. I did all that. I did so good. And then when she switched me to the Mediterranean, I told you I'm still not going to eat bread or crackers or anything to that effect because for me, it is a gateway food. I'll talk about that in a minute. Well, the more I read and little articles, they say, eat your whole grain breads, get you some whole grain crackers. So I got some whole grain seeded bread. I told you all about it. Got me some pitas, some whole wheat pitas. Got me some whole grain crackers up from the Aldi's. And when I started eating those, that is when I went downhill because even though they were complex carbs and were perfectly acceptable on my diet, my brain said, you're going to eat a sandwich? You might need some chips with that sandwich. And if I don't eat the chips, then I'm going to be looking for something else. That whole wheat pita, dipping into that hummus, you might say, oh, well, maybe I want a white one because it's softer. If, if I could eat this one, maybe I want a white um, pita bread because it is softer than this whole wheat. And those crackers? forget it. Those crackers with that chili, oh, they were good, but it just made me want something crunchy. Just made me want a snack. So even though these foods were healthy for me, as far as the whole grain goes, they were not healthy for my brain because they made me want to go outside of the parameters that I should have stayed in and made me start, just from a brain standpoint, craving more of the carbohydrates in the sugars and things and that's when i started on that slippery slope down and I, I, i've been down for a week today since yesterday was a wash and today's way in day today's you know today's my monday because everybody says we'll start monday my mondays are thursdays so i'm starting fresh um back today i'm, I'm getting i'm put i've put all that bread in the freezer the crackers i'm going to use at christmas to go with um, my cheese ball and i don't have anything i'm not going to eat any more bananas because that i cut bananas out completely on low carb too and when i started eating bananas it just got my sweet tooth worked up so these are things that had she not switched me to the mediterranean diet i would not have realized the correlation and seeing the experiment within myself and finding out, well, this is how your body works. Is this how your body been working for three years? Why you can't get nowhere? Because you won't lay off of that stuff? Even in moderation, my body doesn't work the same way. Because my brain doesn't work the same way. Okay. So, let me see if there's any other notes. I can't get my page turned. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Now, I just want to give you a quick little set of information, and we'll be done. Maybe that wasn't too bad. Refined carbs are linked to obesity, obviously, because we've got to eat more and more and more. Heart disease, type 2 diabetes. This is a little article I found that says signs you're eating too many refined carbs. And again, I'm not talking about your whole grains. And if you don't have a problem with breads and crackers being a gateway drug, like I call it, those are included in on that. Number one, weight gain. We've talked about that. Number two, energy crash. Who here has not had a sugar high and a sugar crash? Raise your hand. I don't see a whole lot of hands. Increased sugar cravings, just what we talked about. We talked about how they worked with those dopamines and serotonins. Skin breakouts, too much, they said especially sugar, can, and especially for the young um, adults, acne. And, uh, here we go, bloating and constipation. And that's because there's no fiber in those refined sugars. And if you're not getting fiber from there, if you're not trying to get fiber from 
beans if you're eating because if if you if you notice when you have a diet of refined carbs that's about the bulk of your diet and you you know that to be true if you stop and you look and see what you ate a box of macaroni and cheese and biscuits and I mean listen I was right <laughs> I was raised on white flour anything anything you make a white flour we eat it so bloating and constipation high cholesterol that's the risk of stroke and heart disease that's where that comes into play so the whole grains that I'm working on now are to try to fix my cholesterol more cavities well that's obvious because of the sugar and then brain fog it says we got to remember food fuels our brain too our brain is full of cells guess what <laughs> those cells need to be cells need to be fed they need to be fed good food so if you're with me i'm not saying do low carb but if you're with me with a renewed um um what's, you know i get on here and talk to y'all and i can't think of words i'm trying to say a renewed um to to eat good to eat healthy even if you don't go low carb and you still eat your refined carbs maybe um try to eat less and see if the, the less of them you eat the less of them it'll make you want to eat but if you want to experiment, stop eating sugar. You don't have to go on a low-carb diet to stop eating sugar. Know that that's going to be healthy for you. That is a no-brainer. There are times when we can um, still eat sugar and want sugar, but we don't have to sit down at the sugar bowl with a spoon. Come on now. I practically have been there. <laughs> Connie? Con? Ain't you the one told me y'all eat butter and sugar sandwiches? You know I know them was good. I bet a lot of y'all eat butter and sugar sandwiches. Back then, you just eat what you eat. So, we're not eating butter and sugar sandwiches anymore. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> commit. That's it. The commit. If you want to commit to trying to eat healthier, then jump on here with me. Let's, let's try to commit together. We can talk about the whole grains because I'm still going to put the whole grains in my diet. But I'm going to add more meat. I'm doing that in-between thing. I'm not restricting my meat as far as chickens and I'm going to eat beef. I'll eat it less. I'll eat pork, which we really can't eat pork much less because we already eat it maybe once a week. And um, I'm not um, limiting my proteins like that. And I'm just going to try to keep it low carb with my added in grains, stay away from all that sugar and the white flour and all that mess. going to go back to what I did in November when I lost the good weight. And if you want to Come along with me. I welcome you. And we'll share tips and tricks down in the comments or email me or whatever. So I think that's all I'm going to say for today. Wish me luck on losing some of that nine pounds worth of, <laughs> I don't know, flubber. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the next video you'll see is going to be Happy Mail. I came home yesterday to three happy meals that was after having such a long day and everything that was a nice um little treat and so i thought i'd put them in a little video by themselves okay so i'll see you then bye